Ever since the atomic bomb ended World War II, discussions about the next world war usually remind us of the potential for a nuclear exchange annihilating the planet. Today, President Bush raised the doomsday threat in talking about Iran. I've told people that if you're interested in avoiding World War III, it seems like you ought to be interested in preventing them from having the knowledge necessary to make a nuclear weapon. And I take, this, I take the threat of Iran with a nuclear weapon very seriously. The president now seems to believe Iran is determined to fire a nuclear weapon at Israel and that Israel would respond and that it would prompt a wider war between the world's superpowers. The president's World War III reference was particularly striking, though, given Russian President Putin's visit this week to Tehran. Putin met with President Ahmadinejad, warned the U.S. not to threaten Iran, and said he, Putin, sees no evidence Iran wants to build a nuclear weapon. If those are in fact his comments, I look forward to having him clarify those because when I visit with him, he understands that it's in the world's interest to make sure that Iran does not have the capacity to make a nuclear weapon. The president has spoken of nuclear threats before, most prominently when he was building a case for war against Saddam Hussein's Iraq. We cannot wait for the final proof, the smoking gun that could come in the form of a mushroom cloud. The Iraq war strained America's relationship with reliable Western allies. Now the stress is building up with countries whose relationship with the United States has been more complex, including Turkey. We are making it very clear to Turkey that we don't think it is in their interest to send uh, troops into Iraq. As for Russia, when President Bush first met Putin, he spoke of looking into Putin's eyes and seeing into his soul. Last night, John McCain said the personal approach is not working. I think that uh, Mr. Putin wants to restore the days of the Russian Empire. I look into his eyes and I see three letters, a K, a G, and a B. White House officials were hoping today's news conference would pressure Congress on budget issues. Congress has not sent me a single appropriations bill. Congress has work to do on education. Congress has work to do on housing. Congress has work to do on trade. But foreign policy and nuclear proliferation dominated the back and forth. And as contemptuous as the president was towards Congress, he was even more contemptuous towards reporters who asked about Israel's recent attack on a suspected nuclear facility in Syria. Does the U.S. embrace that kind of preemptive strike? I understand what you're trying to take. It's a clever ruse to get me to comment on it, but I'm not going to. Thank you. Why you think it's not appropriate to make that judgment when it's a, it is a real world scenario, as we know, since they apparently hey. took this action against Syria? Hey. Welcome back. Thank you. A few minutes later, when another reporter tried again. In all due respect to you and Gregory, this is not my first rodeo. And I, I know where you're trying to get me to comment. I, I'm not going to comment on it, one way or the other. The administration has talked about mushroom thank you. clouds. Martha, Martha, thank you. Lane. The president did say he was not about to slow down on foreign policy issues or domestic ones, despite the clock beginning to run out on his presidency. I'm going to work hard to the finish. I'm going to sprint to the finish line, and then you'll find me in Crawford. The question is, what will President Bush's successor find dumped in his or her lap? U.S. troops, of course, will still be in Iraq. And there may be other challenges waiting if President Bush really believes and acts on his belief that what's at stake in Iran is World War III. I'm David Schuster for Hardball in Washington.